Next up, we have Pam Blondin. She is owner at Deco Raleigh. Also with her is Bob Massengale, landscape architect, master's candidate, NTSU College of Design, Allison Rogers, social media expert, Yellow Dog Creative. They would be described, I'm not sure if this is collectively, individually, or how it would be parceled up, but energetic, creative, and certainly collaborative. The story we want to tell tonight is about Raleigh's first parklet. This is a story about a, how a community is creating this space and how this space will be for the community. A parklet is basically a mini park. Ours, called Raleigh Space, will reclaim two parking spaces and offer a small oasis in the middle of Raleigh. I'm Pam Blondin. I own Deco Raleigh. My mission for Deco has um, is for DECO to be a creative, colorful hub for our community. So it was natural to extend this mission to the space around the store. I wanted bike racks, art, um, plants, fun stuff happening outside around the store just like it was happening in the store. I'm Bob Massengale, and uh, I'm a master's student in landscape architecture at NC State in the College of Design. And um, my friend and classmate, Tyner Tu, uh, and I had some urban and ecological interests uh, that we really wanted to explore downtown. And uh, we thought parklets were a terrific venue or, or vehicle for that exploration. Our job was to translate our team's values into uh, what would become a buildable vision for our site. But first, we had to find the right partners. So then we met Pam. And uh, she, shared our, she shared our ethic of community-oriented design, and it was the perfect fit. Pam invited her design and communications team to jump on board, and uh, the talented tandem between Yellow Dog Creative, Julie Schmidt, and Allison Rogers joined our Raleigh Space team. Uh, Yellow Dog Creative brought the ability to brand the idea um, and then to reach out through social media, build a website, and to communicate to build awareness for the project. From the very beginning, we were clear that this project would be about creating something extraordinary for Raleigh. We are definitely a team of overachievers, and we set the bar very high for ourselves, and we hope that we're setting the bar high for future parklets in Raleigh. Uh, while the team was working on getting the idea off the ground, uh, Yellow Dog spent um, the time launching Raleigh Space, the brand, um, and the idea behind the word space was to, uh, was, it was a word that coupled up with so many other words like green space, mind space, open space, and um, we wanted to give a sense that it was an open area where many different things could happen. Uh, the brackets represent parking lot and um, a, or the parking space and give a physical space in the logo itself for different treatments. So a year ago, I didn't even know what a parklet was. Uh, back in May, I got, was on vacation in San Francisco and I got to see some of the first parklets in the country. They were really cool, but I gotta say, I thought we could do better. Seriously, I wondered, couldn't parklets be a showcase for all of you, for the creativity that's oozing out of Raleigh? So a year ago, citizens and urban designers with a mega crush on Raleigh uh, had a vision for downtown's potential. And basically, this vanguard inspired our leaders to create new policy for downtown. This policy was an opportunity for our project to take flight, and it really set the stage for our community campaign to be launched towards reality. Um, so we chose a community funding method, Kickstarter, and uh, for the Kickstarter campaign, the centerpiece is usually compelling video. So we reached out to some of the forward thinkers in the community to um, help us make that. An important part of the process was to connect with our neighbors, and that started the public conversation about this parklet. We couldn't even start the process without getting a petition signed by everybody on our block. Um, but we also sat down with um, business owners, neighbors, people in downtown Raleigh and um, started talking about what could this parklet be. A lot of them offered up goodies for us to give away as premiums for the uh, Kickstarter and they also agreed to be in our Kickstarter video. Right. And so, as Pam mentioned, students, it really became an opportunity for uh, people like Tyner and myself to expand this opportunity to other classmates. And so, with the help of Carla Delcom, one of our professors at State, we turned this into a, a student experience, learning how to make a Kickstarter and content, making models and ideas for what the parklets could become, and beginning to do outreach for the public. Um, so while the students were uh, hard at work, we were raising money on Kickstarter and promoting it every way we could. 
um, both um, we brought up backers you know locally and internationally and we surpassed our initial goal of 16,500 with two days to spare and it really took reaching out to the networks of everyone up to this point who had been involved to make it happen. Right. And so while the money was being raised, uh, students were simultaneously really refining our design options and engaging the public. So our work became a vehicle to make sure our initial principles were still resonating with the community values. So here's what you have to realize. All of this stuff was happening over a period of about two and a half weeks. It was super condensed. More than 200 people took surveys. They told us their priorities for the parklet. Landscape designers, College of Design folks, um, City of Raleigh professionals, downtown workers, residents, everybody was talking and sharing ideas. Now we get to the end of, the, end of July. We've got eight fabulous models from these uh, grad students in their course. Um, the Kickstarter has succeeded, and the city is on board. Social media is buzzing like crazy. And so at this point, we looked at Bob and Tyner, and we sent them to their cave and told them to take all the best ideas from students and the public and build us a design. So our job was to basically distill the student forums to make sure they re reflected what our initial values were, and they still reflected the public feedback. So what we had to do was try to make that meet code for the requirements for the city. And phase one became the core of our parklet. We had to do two phases. We talked about benches, planners, workspaces, water for pets, and incorporated sustainable design into the, into the storm parklet. So this is where we are today. The parklet got approved this week. Yeah. Yeah. Building it is gonna be another community effort over the next month. We also hope to build more, something more than a physical space. And I want to make sure to get this in because it impacts all of you. One of the things that we want to do to set this apart from other parklets in the country is we've created a fund um, to support designers, creative people, innovators, makers to come and use and transform the space in the parklet. We will be announcing um, how to apply for that money in um, just a couple of months. And we hope to see all of you at the parklet. We brought stickers for you to come get later.